Hey guys, I'm Randy. And I'm Daniel. We're two lifelong friends and musicians, but when we're not playing gigs, we like to talk games. And today on the Gaming Gig Podcast, we're taking a look at the future of Sea of Thieves and the recent reactions to Dragon's Dogma 2. All right, man, we got a lot to talk about this week. We're going to be talking about Wind Waker, Twilight Princess. We're going to be talking about that new Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. Oof. We're gonna, mouthful. Be, we're gonna be talking about Dragon's Dogma, also maybe some Princess Peach and Rise of the Ronin, and then finally the PSVR 2 getting its production paused, and then are you keeping track? Uh huh. Sea of Thieves. We got the 2024 preview event. Lots of stuff in the gaming world this week. We're gonna catch up. Thank you guys for hanging out with us here on the podcast and letting us uh, reheat last week's gaming news for you Ooh. and tell you all about it. Right? Reheat. <laughs> Is this like our new thing? Are we reheating the news? We're not reheating it, but that's kind of, I feel like, what we're doing here. And I'm not talking like some bullcrap microwave. I'm talking like a twice-baked potato. That's kinda, right. Yeah. Kind of reheat. You know, mm-hmm. like like when you have leftover meatloaf and you slice it up and you reheat it on the pan and make a sandwich. Like a good kind of reheat. Yes. Well, speaking of the good kind of reheat... Um, one thing that we've been hoping that mm-hmm. Nintendo would reheat for us yep, yep. would be the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD games that were on Wii U. Mm-hmm. There's been rumors, but it feels like years yeah. that these were coming to the Switch, yet here we are. And they're finally coming. And I wish. I wish that was the news I had to tell you. But um, instead, I'm just going to make you feel old because I'm going to tell you that right now, the Wind Waker HD is now older than Wind Waker was when Wind Waker HD came out. But the question is, is Wind Waker HD older than Wind Waker? No, it's not. It's definitely not. Okay. I was just checking to make sure that <laughs> like the make sure like the uh you know there was like a time loop that happened that caused Wind Waker HD to be older than Wind Waker. Yeah. Well I just wanted to make sure that wasn't the case, but that does make me feel old. Um yeah. that's that's not that doesn't make me feel good. Um, well, I just it doesn't think, make me feel bad either. No, I mean, like, like it does feel like it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. It does not. The you Wii know? U just feels like yesterday. No, it definitely feels pretty like recent. Mm-hmm. But still, um, you know, I wanted to see what people was going on here. Uh, but first, we have a comment from Eric Windsor who said both of these need switch ports if they want people to actually play them, which I a hundred percent agree on because mm-hmm. let's be honest, no one had a Wii U. If you want them to play it now. I mean, yeah, right. I, I agree. I mean, and they probably didn't do, I'm just completely bull crap in here, but I, they probably didn't do as good as they could have done because they were on the Wii U. Oh, I'm sure. So not. yeah, I mean, throw have them on you played either Wind Waker HD or Twilight Princess HD? No, I've never played Twilight Princess at all. I have played the original Wind Waker, but no, I've never played HD of either one. And you had a Wii U. You have a Wii U. Uh, well, no, I had, um, I owned one fourth of a Wii U oh, that, okay, that yeah. didn't live with me. So could I have played it? Yeah. Maybe theoretically. Yeah, but I, but I never did. And I don't own a Wii U now because the Wii U that did reside at my house now no, resides at your house yeah. and neither one of us actually own it. No. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if the <laughs> person who does around. own it remembers that <laughs> he or she owns it, <laughs> but true. they do. <laughs> Uh, but I was interested to see how many people actually have played either Wind Waker HD or Twilight Princess HD. Mm-hmm. Put out a poll asking if they had played Wind Waker HD or Twilight Princess HD, and Daniel hit us with the results here. Well, out of 2.2 thousand votes, 14% of y'all have played Wind Waker HD, 7% of y'all played Twilight Princess HD, 18% have played both, but uh, a resounding most at 62% have played neither. The fact that it was so high, even a percentage of people who said yes, like mm-hmm. almost 40% of people saying they had played one or both of these games, um, was amazing to me. Now, Game & Gig is a fairly Nintendo-skewed yeah. you know, endeavor, whether that be on the main channel or here on the podcast. We know we are old Nintendo fans, so it kind yeah. of comes with the territory. Mm-hmm. But still, um, I thought those numbers were pretty impressive, mm-hmm. personally. You thought the yeses were impressive. Yes. I thought it was pretty impressive that almost 40% of people had played these games, whether one or the other. Or right. Both, one know? or the other or both. Yeah. Well, when you look at it that way, it does kind of surprise me, I guess, because it mm-hmm. was on the Wii U. And, and like I said, ain't nobody had one of those. Um, but it's still a pretty dang big majority for neither. 
Um, True. But that's because the yeses are split among three categories. So That's correct. Yeah, yes. I see where you're coming from yeah. on that. Um, now, that being said, there was a little confusion in the comments, I think, of people saying they had played the originals and stuff like So maybe some people mm-hmm. voted that they had played Wind Waker HD when they had really only played Wind Waker or Twilight right. Princess. It could have been the same. Definitely. So, um, you know, yeah, we were asking specifically about the Wii U HD ports, but maybe people have played all the others. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on to our next small topic, unless you have anything else to say about Wind Waker. Not a thing. I would I would like it to be there. Thank you, Nintendo. I would love it to be there. And it's weird because it's we've had rumors forever that it's going to happen, and it's not there. Maybe so it'll strange. be a launch title for the Switch, too. Maybe that's what they're waiting for. Mm-hmm. They're waiting, that's going to be their Zelda presence at yeah. the beginning. I mean, heck, I could see it. Yeah. Totally. All right, so this week we got the reveal trailer, which was a, like, story cinematic trailer for ni- Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what to call this. Is it just called 1943? Is it called 1943 Rise of Hydra? Is it called Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra? I um, don't know. I don't know, but I'm excited to see the MCU kind of get back to something interesting. You know, I haven't really cared for the last few movies, and so I'm excited when this one hits theaters. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay, so that is the thing. It does look like a movie. <laughs> it looks great. It looks really Really visually impressive. Yeah. It almost doesn't look like a game. In fact, I saw um, some people posting just like clips of it mm-hmm. before I went and watched it. And I thought it was a movie. Yeah. It's it's past Uncanny Valley. Like it is. It's, we've reached like like this. This crap is pretty much realistic. It looks good. It looks really, really good. Um, that being said. I don't know what to call it, it to answer yeah. your question. I don't either. I just it, made I mean, a joke. Like looking at the. The poster that they put out, Mm -hmm. it is 1943 all huge. So yeah, maybe that's it. I think it's probably going to be called Marvel 1943 Rise of Hadra. That's that's my guess. I would guess so. Maybe. Um, So this is a game, and the the it's beautiful. I mean, like I'm sure I've been putting up some of the Mm -hmm. gameplay. Now we're seeing it, or not gameplay. I'm sorry, the trailer because there's no gameplay, and that's the thing. There's no gameplay here. You don't actually play the game at all. You just watch it. It. The thing is, I don't even know what kind of game it's going to be based on the trailer. Is it going to be like a an action game? Is it going to be a point and click? Is it going to be... I don't know what it's going to be. I kind of thought it was going to end up being like a JRPG, which is kind of what I was thinking. A JRPG? Um, yeah. And it may just be because I've been playing so much Final Fantasy VII, but... Now every it game. Just, it was yeah. giving me JRPG vibes. Um, sure. No, I'm sure it's just an action game. That's the way it would feel, right? That's what would make sense. Yeah, I mean, like that seems to be, but I mean, we don't know, and that's what's crazy. I don't think it's going to be like a tech, like a grid based tech. They may game. have, they may have actually said. Now that I'm thinking about, it, they may have said what it was. I'm sure it is an action game because that makes the most sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is just to me very kind of almost annoying that they didn't show any gameplay at all in this trailer. Yeah, um, because although it looks great, it personally i'm kind of bummed out that i don't get to see like what the game will be like and it makes me immediately kind of turned off by it just mm-hmm. because you know we're cynical now yeah and we've seen this over and over where a game you know focuses on looking good and then we don't get to see what the actual game's like or what we, you know who knows what the game is even i uh i also i can't say i'm like excited you yeah, know about yeah. it i thought the trailer looked awesome i mean mm-hmm. how could you say it didn't But I'm with you. You know, you didn't give me anything to actually sink my teeth into about what the game's going to actually be like. Mm -hmm. So how can I be excited? I can't be, especially with Marvel's like track record with some of these games. I mean, I know they've Mm. had they've had games like, well, of course, there's Spider-Man, but there's also Guardians of the Galaxy. So maybe I spoke too soon, but I'm thinking Avengers is kind of where my head went. And I know that that game didn't exactly have legs. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't say I'm excited, but I will reserve judgment. Right. But we did ask the people what mm-hmm. their thoughts were. You know, we said, what are your thoughts on Marvel? 1943, Rise of the Hydra. What do you think we should call it? And 3.2 thousand people voted, and Randy's going to hit us with those results. Yeah. 5% of people said they're sold already. Uh, most people, 44%, <laughs> said, looks cool, but I need some gameplay. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm at. Yeah. 15% of people said, I'm not interested in this game. And 37% of people said, I don't know what this is. Now, we also did this poll on our Discord, and... It was way more people saying they just weren't interested in this game. So maybe yeah. the people on our Discord server just don't want to play a Marvel game. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I'm in the looks cool, but need some gameplay. But I'm, 
but I'm not in like the looks cool and I'm optimistic and need some gameplay. I'm in like the looks cool and you're going to have to win me over with some good gameplay. Right. That's well, this is the, uh, the game director that was behind some of the Uncharted games. So, you know, that's good that, you know, mm -hmm. that's awesome. As a person who loves the, some, loves all the Uncharted games, to be honest with you, I love them all. Um, that's great for me, you know, so mm -hmm. that makes me a little hyped. Yeah. Well, maybe it'll be good. We got a comment here from Rampid Warthog Studios <laughs> who said, it's just going to be another soulless game that focuses on the woe factor instead of the fun factor. Like we've seen with uh, recently with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora was definitely one of those games. Definite woe factor. Um, whoa, this is bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, that's the thing we don't know because we haven't got the scene in gameplay. So we'll just mm -hmm. have to wait. It's just kind of disappointing, I think, for everyone that we didn't get the scene of it. We also have a comment here from uh, Fry Fry Psychic who said, I don't know why people are acting like all Marvel games are going to be bad. The only recent bad one was the Avengers game. Yeah, and I, I pretty much was with you there, Fry Frip. Um, Is it Fry Frip? Oh, no, it's Fry Fry Psychic, not Fry Frip. I just thought it was, I read it as Fry Frip, and then I was impressed that you read it correctly, but I uh, wanted to say Fry Frip because I thought it was funny. I just really wanted to say Fry Frip. Now we're back. Um, I'm with you. Yeah. I, I mean, once I started actually going through the list, I was like, you know, honestly, yeah, Avengers is kind of the only recent bad one. So, Well, I mean, but we get a lot of bad superhero games, but Marvel games, not yeah. too many bad ones of those except think, Avengers. Yeah, I think we have DC to thank for some of that recently. Oh, gosh, know, so, yeah. So maybe I was a little unfair to old Stan Lee and his... Uh, and his Legacy. Yeah. Who I love, by the way. Stan Lee freaking slaps. He did. <laughs> yes, he, he did. He did slap. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> Great segue. <laughs> he did. Um, he did slap. All right. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, thinking about Stan Lee, which makes me think about Dale. I'll tell you. Well, they were kind of one and the same, weren't they? They were. Honestly, I, I would go as far as to say that Dale and Stan Lee... Or probably the best of us. Some of the best of us. Two of the best of us. Exactly. But there's always a third. We're going to have to fight over which one of us is the third, won't we? No. That would be a stupid fight. It's not one of us. <laughs> 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 it's probably like Landon, <laughs> you know, or yeah. somebody like Dan, maybe, you know. Right. Our friend Nick. Not it's me. not it's us, not me buddy. and you. No, it's not. No, it's not us. But before we move on to something that's actual, real, and concrete, which is Dragon's Dogma 2, I think it's important that we tell the people about our Discord, because we did just name some people from it. We did. We got a nice Discord server, a small Discord server, but one that we would love for you to join. Mm -hmm. It's a great place just to hang out, talk video games, also find out when we post the podcast, when we go live on Twitch. Yep. Uh, just also, we have gaming conversations there because we post the polls there. Mm-hmm. There's an invite link to our Discord server. Wherever you get this podcast, just find the description. There's an invite link there. We would love to have you be there. Mm -hmm. And don't be scared because I know when I join a new Discord server, I'm like, oh, I don't think I'll ever post, you know. But just do it. Just just like actually say something. And I promise people are cool and it'll be great. And you can you can become a part of a great little small community. Yeah. So It's very, very welcoming. All right. So, Randy, um, mm -hmm. we talked yesterday in the car a little bit as we were coming back from putting the gig in gaming gig mm -hmm. because I was like, Hey, I've been playing so much Final Fantasy and Sea of Thieves, but didn't Dragon's Dogma 2 just come out? How's that going? And you were like, well, buddy, it ain't all sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. So we had a really interesting scenario kind of pop up this past week and that la this past Friday, we had three games, mm -hmm. three big-ish games, you know, all drop at the same time, which is always fun to see. We had Dragon's Dogma 2, mm -hmm. we had Rise of the Ronin, mm -hmm. and we had Nintendo's offering, which was Princess Peach Showtime. And um, that was pretty cool. Um, and I think that the one that most people were excited about out of those three was probably Dragon's Dogma 2, but we did a poll. Now we have concrete evidence that that was what most people was interested in because we got our results back with people saying 54% of people would pick up Dragon's Dogma 2, 19% pick up Princess Peach Showtime, and only 27% of people picking up Rise of Ronin. Yeah, uh, I, I I literally would fall in perfectly with this order of, of majority. You know, like I, I would have said Dragon's Dogma 2 for sure. Mm -hmm. And then next I'd have been like, okay, maybe Rise of the Ronin. And I really just have not been interested in, in Showtime. 
Well, yeah, I think. Well, I mean, I'm. Sur- I was surprised that 19 percent of people even said Showtime. But yeah, it feels like just a real late switch offering. They're they're. It just feels like an obligatory peach game, and and that makes me sad. You know, like they could do. Maybe I'm talking out my ass here, and this game is sick. I don't know, mm-hmm. but they could do something really cool with the Princess Peach character. Like, I, I mean, th- I, th- I don't know that the game is sick. I mean, like it seems like reviews were kind of you know middle of the road. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing too terrible, nothing too great. I think Princess Peach got a 75 um, in terms of critic reviews, passing score. Um, Rise of the Ronin was right there with it at a 76, and then Dragon's Dogma reviewed the best out of the three, coming in at 89. 89? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's so higher than I thought it would be. It reviewed, it reviewed quite well. Almost, like, and I think on one platform it even got a 90. Like, it was in the, it was in the A's. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a comment here from Koi the Idiot, and you'll have to just, you know, he says he's an idiot, but okay. Um, says, tons of good shiznit this week. I'm going to edit you there. Mm-hmm. Um, just a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, it did seem like we were getting a lot of good stuff. And yeah. maybe this is like good. Did this comment come out before Dragon's Dogma? This was before all ago. the games came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, this was like a like a day before all the games yeah. came out. So I don't think you're an idiot, Koi. I think you're an optimist. And you're a My Hero fan, and that is awesome. Because I love My Hero. I mean, what I, I do think that Dragon's Dogma, like it reviewed really well. Um mm-hmm. and so that's good. I mean, like Capcom games have reviewed really well. Cap God. They're Cap yeah. God for a reason. And in fact, this week we also, uh, you know, like someone went back and looked in, or like maybe it was Metacritic, I think, that announced like the the top developer of last year in terms of like highest critic scored games from that developer was from Capcom. Yeah. And and I'm not a bit shocked to hear that because they dropped RE4 Remake, which was freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. And they dropped Street Fighter 6, which was freaking amazing. So they had a great year. Yeah. They had two really, really high reviewing games. I don't know how uh, Exo Primal did. I'm sure it didn't do too hot. But it probably know. didn't do that awful either. Yeah. Um, you know, like, it's tough to tell. But, um, you know, we're talking about this in kind of weird ways because we do know there was a lot of pushback against Dragon's Dogma 2 once it came out to the, the general audience, not just reviewers. Yeah. Um, we have a comment here from, hit us with this one, Daniel, this one from Tasutua. To, to Ta- ta? Tasuta. Tasuta. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I missed so, that. So Tasuta, you know, Koi was the, an optimist. Tasuta may be a little bit of a realist or maybe a pessimist, but he said, or they said, or she said, I've learned my lesson. So I'm going to wait me a few weeks and see user reviews before I buy anything. And the key word is re- user reviews, yes. which are very different than critic reviews. Cause at that point we had, we had had critic reviews um, and dragon's mm. dogma comes out and okay. It has received tons of backlash for a couple different things. And this is what I was telling you about yesterday. Yeah. Number one thing, or I guess maybe not number one thing, but a huge thing is that it is just riddled with microtransactions. And that that made me so sad to hear. I mean, I, I really have been looking forward to playing this. I never played the first one. Mm-hmm. It seemed like it was just going to be a nice, meaty, solid JRPG, or maybe not J, but RPG, with some cool-looking combat, some good graphics. I don't want microtransactions in my RPGs. Right. And not only that, it's the first game that Capcom has put out at the $70 price point. So not only is it a single player game coming in at a $70 price point, it also is filled with microtransactions. Yeah. Um, like I put this one comment that was from Steam that I was, like, I was on the Steam page looking at it mm-hmm. and I saw this comment. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and it said, Hey Capcom, you can purchase a good review DLC for $199. Um, I thought that was really funny. Dude, that, we'd make a killing on that. Right. Um, so the game was at mostly negative on Steam mm-hmm. when it had a, just a couple thousand reviews. It has gone up now. Is it mixed? Yeah. And, you know, I was hearing before it even dropped that it didn't seem like the PC version was going to be very well optimized to begin with. Oh, no, it's not. So that, that's really even maybe a bigger sticking point than the microtransactions. That's not going to be good for your Steam review mm-hmm. uh, for sure. And that, and that's really sad because the RE engine historically has been a really friendly engine for for lower spec rigs to run yeah but they've done some like they've kind of messed with it a little bit i think from what i saw like this is kind of a side note here but Mm -hmm. um i saw a leaker on um x was talking about how um 
Dragon's Dogma 2 kind of like expanded uh, the RE Engine's functionality for mm -hmm. open world games. Okay. And what they were saying is that Resident Evil 9 is being developed right now as an open world game using the same sort of things. Okay. Interesting. So uh, I hope it doesn't have a bunch of microtransactions, oh. but I will say I'm kind of not super into open world games anymore, mm -hmm. but I would... I would play an open world Resident Evil game. That sounds kind of interesting. You know, like the Resident Evil games are kind of like, they are linear, but like, uh, especially um, like Resident Evil Village already had almost an open world feel anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's not even that weird to me to think that like something like Resident Evil Village, like taking one step further and going full open world, like yeah. that doesn't seem that weird to me at all. Um, so I'm totally cool with them. If they want to make it an open world game, they pretty much have been going that direction anyway. Resident mm -hmm. Evil Seven was a pretty open game, I mean, not as much as Village. Mm -hmm. So they've been they've been gradually kind of going that way. What's something to note here is that you know everyone's feathers are ruffled up because of these microtransactions yeah. and stuff. Um, I'm mine are positively fluffed. But here's here's the deal. This is not a new thing for Capcom. In fact, um, a game that I know you love, Resident Evil 4, mm -hmm. was also riddled with microtransactions. But the thing was, they were, com and in Dragon's Dogma, the same thing. They're not, none of them are required. Like, there's nothing behind paywalls. It's all just like, if you want to go in and buy it, you can. Mm -hmm. um, now, Dragon's Dogma may push them more towards you, but Resident Evil 4 Remake had tons of microtransactions and you could buy all kinds of stuff in that game, but the game really didn't push them. Yeah. I don't um, remember that ever being pushed to me. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, it's when a game pushes it to you, that's kind of annoying, but also when, you know, it's the game hasn't earned it. Like resident evil four kind of already earned its status of being like a well-loved yeah. game. It's a goat game. Right. So like they can kind of get away with that a little more, but dragon's dogma, um, like the first game was, you know, well received, but it's old now. It's been yeah. a long time. Like they're coming back with Dragon's Dogma 2. They have a little bit to prove. For sure. And by doing something like this is not exactly great because you really need all the fans on your side when you're reintroducing an older franchise. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, maybe just a really solid RPG would have done it, Capcom. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe it's worth looking into I don't know I was really interested in it I hear what you're saying that you know it's not necessarily pay to win no like everything is can be found in game like it's all just like if you mm -hmm. want to uh buy these things you can but you don't have to none of it is like things are behind paywalls like there was a kind of a false thing going around saying that character customization was tied behind a paywall cuz there was like these mm -hmm. some sort of in-game item that you can use that is a way that you can uh, change your character's, you know, appearance after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, and you could buy that. Yeah. But you can also find out in the world. It's just rare. And I'm, that's the thing. I'm going to tell you right now, Capcom. This is some, this is some Ubisoft crap. Because what, what we just described is exactly one of the big things that turned me away from, like, Valhalla. Yeah, Herman Valhalla Assassin's was really Valhalla. bad about that. It wasn't the pay to win, no, not but it was just shoving the ability to pay in your face at every turn, right? And that makes me makes me upset when and I've it, already paid you seventy dollars in this case. Yeah, you know, it's different if it's a free, if free to play game, but this is not a free to play game, right? I feel like it's also a little different when it's a multiplayer game, but this is not a multiplayer game. Sure, I mean when you when you were talking about the character customization thing, like. Sea of Thieves is that way. Once you make your pirate, if you want to oh, yeah. change your pirate's actual body, you know, you have to pay a couple bucks. It is like really behind a paywall. Yeah. It's it, not just like you can you, also find out in the world. You cannot. You it's cannot. Behind. No, yeah. No, no. Once you make it, it's made unless you want to pay a couple bucks. But that is a always online multiplayer sandbox game. Mm -hmm. That's maybe a little different. I feel like we, you and I are bad about letting Sea of Thieves have a pass. Um, just like if I'm thinking Maybe of it are. objectively, you know what I mean? I feel like me and you let Sea of Thieves buy, you know, because we love the game. Mm -hmm. So we think like, we say like, oh, you know, when we start to look at it, it's like, oh, it is a little, I don't know. Sea of Thieves is weird because it is entirely cosmetic. So it's almost like 
-hmm. You don't have to spend anything to play the game and get the full experience. So like once you buy the game, the fact, yeah, once you buy the game, it's not a free to play. No, it's not a free to play game. But once you buy the game, you don't have to buy anything ever again. And you will get a great experience out of it. Mm -hmm. Because of that, we like let it go. But Sea of Thieves is a very heavily monetized game. I mean, heavily. 100%. Um, but They're always adding stuff to their Emporium, you know. Yeah. And, and not unlike a Fortnite or something like that. Yeah. You know, not at quite the same clip. Um, but, yeah, you're right. It's heavily monetized. And, uh, you know, maybe you should look at it a little more objectively and stop giving them such a pass. I mean, maybe. I should, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I do feel like we're bad about that. <laughs> But yeah, I don't want to talk. I mean, we're going to talk about Sea of Thieves later in the podcast. So. Yeah, we are. And we love Sea of Thieves. God of mine. I love it. <laughs> we are bad about letting him. Well, one of the things I love that I'm really sad to talk about this week is the fact that Sony um, is, according to Bloomberg, mm-hmm. uh, there's a report saying that Sony is pausing the production of PlayStation VR 2 headsets to clear their backlog. They basically have, you know, a bunch of headsets that they haven't sold yet. Yeah. And they're just pausing the production so they can sell those and maybe they'll start back up once they get rid of those headsets. Yeah. So I wonder why they have accumulated such a backlog of these things. Like, oh. Why do they not just fly off the shelves? You know, they've got a lot of great PSVR two exclusive games that people can play that people are just beating down the doors for. Um, no, they don't. I'm being sarcastic. That's say, the if you issue. cannot sense Daniel's sarcasm. It's heavy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a bad thing. And uh, we we have a comment here, you know, um, from... D1 Usions oh, of Granger. Oh, but you know what? This was in, in reverence. So, like, here's another thing that came out a few weeks back that we didn't talk about on the podcast, mm-hmm. but made me super excited, is that they put out in their most recent, or in a recent PlayStation um, blog, they said that they were working on bring PC support to the PlayStation VR 2. Yeah. Which is amazing. That is if, amazing. If that headset starts to work with your PC, mm-hmm. it instantly opens up just exponentially more games. Yeah. And it makes that headset so much more valuable. And that takes some pressure off Sony because now all they've done is created an excellent piece of hardware. Yes. You know, it's, it's a really good piece of hardware. It's too. not the same as like creating almost like a console. You know, that just happens to be really powerful and then not playing games for it or not putting out games for it. Mm -hmm. Whereas now they've just created a really awesome piece of hardware and people could play other things on it. That would definitely make it more valuable. I agree. Oh, yeah, because it's it's one of the best headsets you can get right now. Yeah. But they really shot themselves in the foot by one. Well, they put out a really great headset and a really great headset is going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's more expensive than a PS5 and doesn't work without a PS5. You can't plug it into a PC right now. That's crazy. You cannot use it on its own. It has to be connected to a PS5. That just sucks. And then the fact that there are not that many games for the PSVR 2 because it's treated as if it's its own console. So PlayStation VR 1 games... Not backwards compatible. You wow. cannot play any of them. That's which is ridiculous. Very frustrating for people like me who got really invested in PlayStation VR one, and I can't play any of the games that I had on there. Very That's annoying. stupid. Yeah. Now they they've left it up to the developers if they want to like port their games forward. They can. Sure. But you can't just play PlayStation VR one games. That sucks. It really sucks. Yeah. But if they bring it to PC, you know, I think that that would be amazing because it is an awesome headset. Mm -hmm. So we put out a poll saying, would you consider buying a PlayStation VR 2 if it could play VR games on PC as well as PS5? Yeah. And at 46 percent, people said, yes, that would make me interested. 15 percent said, no, it'd still not be worth it. 8% 8% said I already own one, and 32% said I'm not even remotely interested in VR. Yeah, so I was surprised that 46% of people, that's almost a majority of people, said that they would be more interested in playing, you know, they would get, sorry, mm-hmm. in getting a PlayStation VR 2 if it could also work with PC. How so, could you not be more interested, though? I'm just saying. Well, true. <laughs> How could maybe you the be way less I, interested? Maybe the way I phrased this was, <laughs> you know. Because I'm in two categories. Here. You are. Yeah. You're like, I would be more interested in if it would also work on a PC, but I'm also not going to buy one. <laughs> exactly. I'm 100% more interested. And for all the people that have it, I would be very happy for them. But I would I would fall into um, That's true. probably the not remotely interested category because it makes me sick. It's not like a would you buy one. It's just not it, my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, if it if I was in the market for one, 
Right. That would definitely become mm-hmm. an option, you know. Yep. Whereas now, I would probably want one that can be used on PC. Right. And that's what brings us to D1 Usions of Grandeur's comment here. Who said, nope, I would have picked it up had it worked with PC day one, but now I have a Quest 3. Mm -hmm. I have no need for it anymore. Yep. And that's the thing. It may be too late for the PlayStation VR 2 because of the Quest 3, which is similarly priced. In fact, it may be cheaper. I think the Quest 3 may be $500. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong about that. Um, But, you know, the Quest 3 works on its own Mm -hmm. or it works with a PC. And... The PS5 work. I mean, sorry, the PSVR2 only works with the PS5 now. Yeah. If it does get PC support later this year, like they say it's going to, mm. that's great. But then, is it too late? Has anyone who wanted one? I've already said. Well, I'm just going to get a, a you know Meta Quest Three instead. Yeah, I would say most people. Um, mm-hmm. There may be a few people who don't have one and decide they want one and realize it's an option and go that route. But I don't know that it's necessarily going to be enough to move the needle. Mm-hmm. Um, And this is not the first time Sony has kind of dropped the ball on a real nice piece of hardware and then kind of pivoted too late in the game. (laughs) Vita. Yeah, the Vita. So, you know, Sony, like, we love you. Just, just, you know. I I wish they had had this to begin with. And, like, now that Sony... (laughs) Sorry hit your table. You're good. And now (laughs) that Sony is starting to be more and more, you know, like, PC friendly. Yeah. I would love... Excuse me. I would love it. Mm -hmm. I would love to see it happen. Yep. Same here. Now, um, Randy. Yes. You realize that uh, we're kind of into Sea of Thieves. We're kind of into it, And yeah. we're going to talk about it. But you know that here lately, we've been playing a lot of Sea of Thieves, and you know where we've been doing it, Randy? Oh, on Twitch. We've been doing it on Twitch. I was like, where are you going with this? I'm going to a segue, Randy. So we're going to tell the people about our Twitch channel. We stream almost every day. So we don't stream every Wednesday, but we might. We might surprise you. And then Fridays and Saturdays, usually we're playing a gig. But every other day of the week, pretty much, we're streaming around 8 p.m. Eastern. Yep. yep. And uh, so go check us out at twitch.tv slash gig, all one word. Mm-hmm. Um, there is also a link to the Twitch channel if you just want to go there and follow us. That's cool in the description of this podcast, wherever you get it. We'd love to hang out with you on Twitch. It's a great place to kind of talk with us live mm-hmm. and uh, see what Daniel's like when he's not on a podcast. He's really cool. He, honestly, he's cool uh, in both places, but he's... Um, he talks about himself in the third person more often on the Twitch channel, if you can believe it. Yeah, and, and, and on the Twitch channel, you get to see Daniel like demonstrate you know, how much more of a pro gamer he is than Randy, and Daniel likes that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right randy <clears throat> i'm gonna take the lead on this one because right, i love me some sea of thieves so all right i was so hyped for this sea of thieves 2024 preview event you know how hyped i was how hyped so man. hyped okay i was so hyped in fact that when i realized the day was upon us and i was at work and it was already being talked about in the discord yeah i muted that crap you muted the discord. i hid, I hid that crap uh, i great. did not let y'all ruin that for me we and, weren't gonna ruin it anyway I don't think it happened. It didn't happen because I didn't let it happen. Okay. But we got a look at season 12, 13, and 14. Are we in season season 11 right now? Is that what season we're in? Yes. We are. Stay with me. We are in season 11 right now. Next will be 12. And crap is going to change, Randy. Okay. Yeah. It's great. That was a toss-up. That was a toss-up. So, yeah, I agree. In season 12... We're getting all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, if you guys are like, I don't play Sea of Thieves. I don't care about Sea of Thieves. Let me tell you, you need to get into it. Yes. It's coming to PlayStation now, so it's mm. more widely available than ever. April the 30th, I think. It is a Game Pass game. Yep, April 30th. It's on Game Pass right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's available on you know Xbox, even on the old generation, on Xbox One. It's there. Yep, and I'm going to appeal to the stuff goblin in mm-hmm. you in you PlayStationers um, because Sea of Thieves is an all-cosmetic Kind of deal, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing you get is going to make you have any higher DPS or be any more effective than anybody else except your skill. But the PlayStation buyers of this game, the the, at least the early adopters, I don't know what the timing is on this. You're going to get some exclusive cosmetics that I can't get. True. So get that crap and then like run into me and like throw it in my face. Like make me mad, you know, like. I'm sure you're going to be so angry that you don't have that PlayStation Dude, Cosmetics. I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm going to be so mad. So, no, but for real, you should you should try to play it. Uh, 
it's going to be awesome. But it has been, you know, aside from the occasional bug and feature, it's been fairly stagnated for a while now. Well, they've they've kind of gradually been adding to it, mm-hmm. very slowly. The yeah. drip feed stuff. Um, but we, what they've sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What they'd usually drip feed is like content, though. Here we're getting like real deal. You know, gameplay changes. Yeah. Yeah. We've gotten a couple of those and those are the ones that typically shake up the game the most. And it's because mm-hmm. they're changing the way that you can approach and manipulate things in this open sandbox world. Yep. Um, and in season 12, we're getting probably season 12 is the newest season that's coming up and they've told us the most about it. Yeah. So it has the, I'd say probably some of the bigger changes or at least the most changes. Um, We're getting some new weapons, which is the first time ever that there's been new weapons added in Sea of Thieves. This has never happened. Like actual weapons you can equip. Now, there there are like items you can pick up that do damage, but these are weapons that you can like get instead of a gun or a sword. You know, like it's a real deal new weapon. Right. And then we're getting throwing knives and Mm -hmm. also the double barrel pistol. Yeah. So, you know, that's pretty cool because uh, one throwing knives is something that you've actually talked about with people before. Yeah, I mean, you, you Jamie, threw up yeah. that idea in the past. Yeah. I think Jamie brought up the idea of like a knife that would be like a quicker version of the sword. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, and what if we could throw them? And I think we were both like, nah, they wouldn't do that. You here know? we are. Here That's we are. Pretty much exactly what it is. Yeah. So you're going to have a, a weak attack, a medium attack, which I think is more like a stab. And then you're going to be able to throw, which apparently is going to do the most damage. But the coolest part to me is that when you throw this knife, it sticks, you know, in the world. Mm-hmm. which I think is awesome because then somebody else can pick it up and throw it back at you. Or you can go pick it up. You can go pick it, it up. It, it's just, that's just going to be cool, I mm-hmm. think. And I'm I'm really, really interested in what kind of damage it does because I think that will kind of show how meta it's going to be. Right. Same thing, kind of the same idea with the double barrel pistol. We don't know exactly how much damage it will do. Or at least I don't think they specified. I don't, I don't think we know. Um, but it basically has, you can either shoot one bullet at a time, or mm-hmm. you can like charge it up and shoot both bullets simultaneously, and it does a much stronger attack that way. And it has some knockback, I think. Yes, mm-hmm. which is, you know, if you play Sea of Thieves, you know, knockback is very important in terms of like yes. using it in combat scenarios. And rare. And very few things actually have knockback. Right. I mean, I think it's just been the blunder and the... and the uh, Sword lunge. Sword lunge, blunder bus, and blunder bombs. Yeah, yes. that's about all I can think of. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's big. Right. Adding that into the game is big. Not only are we getting new weapons, though, we're also getting some new equipment. So these will be things that you can, you know, find in the world, pick up, use, not use, maybe sell. I don't know. But we're getting this thing called the Bone Caller, mm-hmm. which is like a new throwable that you can throw. And it summons some skellies to like fight by your side and basically become like, you know, little crewmates for you. That's interesting to me. I can't say that I think it's super cool, but, you know. I could see situations where it would be useful and um, I don't see it being game breaking. So I'm I'm all for it. I kind of need to see how that one works in the real world before I, you know, feel too strongly about it. I think it's kind of cool. Um, And depending on how strong the skellies are, like if they're just like base low level skellies, they're not going to put up much fight. So I think that's what they'll be. But, but what my vision for it isn't that they are supposed to kill people. You know, they're, they're supposed to keep people busy for just that one instant longer that you need. You know, mm-hmm. that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Daniel's looking at this from the real sweaty perspective. Like, oh my gosh, if they're about to sink and you need them to be doing something else, you throw a bone collar on them and then they got something that's just occupying their space that now they can't bucket and repair and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Throw like five bone collars on them if they'll let you. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm at, that's the thing. We got to find out how, like, that's how they're going to balance this is how mm-hmm. often you can actually get these things. Because, like, like say, curse balls, right? Right now, they're pretty rare. You don't run across that many of them. So it's mm-hmm. like they don't in, enter the meta that strongly because they're not that common. Yeah. And I, you know, even if the bone collar is common, I wonder if there's a limit to how many skellies you can just have at a time. Yeah. It could be that there, how many you can have in an area at once. Mm hmm. Um, we're also getting something called the wind caller, which is a device that blows wind. Yeah. And you can use it to blow enemies around or other pirates, or you can also use it to blow your own sails, which is anti against physics, but you know. Yes. So you you can blow your own sails. You can also put that crap on the end of a rowboat and use it like a speedboat, which I think is a little silly. Like I think we might have crossed just a little bit of a line with me on that one. 
But um, and you can also I'll try it. Yeah, you can also just blow it and then just Zip propel through. yourself yeah. along backwards in the water. You can jump off a high place and blow it at the ground and not take fall damage. It's um, wild. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. You know? that, that device seems strange to me. I will be interested to see how it goes. Again, it depends on how common it is. Yeah. And it'll probably start out being fairly common, and then they're going to remove it and make it so that hardly anyone has it, and then we'll forget it exists. Yeah, and then every now and then we'll be chasing somebody, and we'll be like, damn, that ship's fast. And then you know somebody that's smarter than us will get in chat and be like, they have a bone collar, you idiots. Wind collar. They have a wind collar, you idiots. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got the bone collar, we got the wind collar. We're also getting a new type of uh, you know cannonball, essentially called the scatter shot, um, which I think is supposed to put four tier one holes. We don't we don't know. They didn't say tier one holes. I think they, they said, did. They did. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I think they said smallest. They holes. said like they said, oh, these holes will be small, and they'll take like oh the length of time of a tier one hole to repair. I think they said that. I guess they didn't necessarily say they let in the same amount of water as tier one. Yeah, I don't know. But anyways, it is a little sort of like a shotgun mm -hmm. for your cannons, essentially. It shoots out four little bitty balls. Yeah, and I, I'm hoping the holes are smaller than tier one, but but we'll see. I could see how that could be like way overpowered. Yes, because if it is for like tier one holes aren't that great. They don't put that much water, but four of them is a different story. Mm -hmm. And if you put, oh, I don't know three scatter shots out at somebody and you hit with nine of them. Okay. now you've got nine tier one holes. You, then you shoot some regular cannonballs and expand some of those. And if you're solo slooping, you're dead. Right. So I, that's the one that probably scares me the most in terms of it being game breaking. The, a in season 12, a common theme. Yes. In season 12, a common theme throughout all the stuff is like, Will this break the game? Because mm -hmm. we all know Sea of Thieves is sort of a fragile sure. ecosystem. It always sits upon a knife's edge. It really, it feels that way. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Next, we have some new mechanics that are coming in Season 12. They're adding some zip lines, which is just a cool quality of life improvement. We've seen a number of quality of life improvements over the years. Mm -hmm. This is just going to be one more. I don't think it's that exciting, but it totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. I'm cool with it. I'm totally cool with it. Absolutely. And I haven't played the Monkey Island DLC, but apparent or yeah. adventure, but uh, they were in that. Yes. So, you know, they're just taking zip lines from something else and adding them to the game. I'm, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have the ability to actually balance and like tightrope walk across the harpoons, which is, I think, the thing I'm most excited about in the next three seasons. Right, yeah. That is so cool, because think of how many times your ship is following another ship, mm -hmm. and you get right up behind them, and you're not in cannon range, mm -hmm. but you are in harpoon range. You could harpoon over, and you got a board now. That's amazing. That sounds freaking awesome. And, like, I mean, we're, like, still sailing, you know, we're moving, and then you're, like, tight roping across the harpoons. That sounds freaking cool. Yeah. You know, you're going to get snopped while you do it. It's gonna, it's just going to be fun for everybody. Yeah, I think that is cool because I don't think it breaks the game, really. No. I think it just adds one more mechanic that I think people will use and utilize, and it'll just be fun. That one is the one that doesn't scare me, but just makes me excited. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm like the most positive about that one of any of them. Yeah. I, I think I agree with you. I agree with you on that. So season 12 is going to have lots of stuff. It's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. Um. But season 13 and 14 is where things get a little... It's like they're starting to get a little weird with things once we get past season 12. Yeah, I don't know that 13 seems weird to me. 14 is really weird, and we're going to get there in a moment. 13, I, I'm really high on. Dude, I think that... Okay, so just so we're not talking in code here. Yeah, yeah. Don't in talk. season 13, we're getting Flameheart and the Burning Blade, which is a new PvPVE world event that players can control. So basically, there's going to be this big Flameheart ship that you can go take down, take over, mm -hmm. and then it's your ship, and it's big. Yeah. I mean, biggest giant. Ship, bigger than the biggest ships that we've been able to sail up to this point. Right. And people have wanted a new ship top for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, and the man of war is always the one that people bring up, you know, because it's, it's bigger than a is. galley, right? Yeah. That's exactly what this is. But there's only one on the server at a time. And that's only when that world event's going on. It's not even always going to be there, I assume. You're probably right. Yeah, you're probably right. There's probably not always one. Yeah, it, it kind of, I, I don't know, because there's Maybe always a storm. 
Maybe it'll and it be. And it kind of like, feels like a roaming storm kind of thing. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I, I just assumed know, it was going to be something like a Fort of Fortune or something, you know, where yeah. where it pops up and then goes away. You're probably right. I don't. I don't know on that, but uh, yeah. So Flameheart, you know, he's the big bad of Sea of Thieves. He hasn't been like in his corp corporeal. Am I using that correctly? Sounds right to me. Yeah, I know what had, you mean. He hasn't been in his body. He ain't had a body in a yeah. while. <laughs> yeah. He's apparently getting one back. He's going to sail around this big ass ship. It's going to blow fire out the front. It's got 10 cannons and it's got a skeleton crew. You go take it over and now it's yours. But mm-hmm. people see you, they come try to take it over. It's like a player controlled like raid event kind of thing. And the whole point of it apparently is that once you do that, you get like orders from Flameheart and you like sail around to these skelly outposts or whatever, mm-hmm. skelly camps, I think, and, and uh, collect tribute. It's and just it, PVE stuff. Yeah, right? it's just going to be another thing to, you know, get commendations for. Right. And I'm sure you'll be marked on the map when you have this. You so, better be. Yeah. So it otherwise it'd be a little broken. It's the only ship that's ever had a front facing attack, too. It can literally shoot a fireball at the front. That is crazy. Two, two giant ones. So it's, it's going to be wild to see. It's going to be fun to try to take one down. It's going to be fun when you have one. Mm-hmm. And because it has a skeleton crew, it doesn't matter if you are solo or if you have a full crew of four people. Um, you should be able to control and use the ship. I don't know how they're going to make that work. They didn't really go into much detail. They may be working that out right now. They, they probably be. are. Yeah. And they it probably, probably won't work. work at first. Yeah, because they showed like <laughs> concept art and then they showed like a version of it going through. They, I don't know if they worked this out entirely. I kind of felt like a lot of what they showed us, at least of season 13 and 14, seemed to be more like I'm still in the idea phases. Yeah. I, I, I didn't really get that impression from 13 like I did 14. No, 14 definitely. Yeah. 14 is definitely where they are throwing caution to the wind and mm-hmm. just... They're just throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks, man. Yeah, they hardly even showed anything when they were talking about season 14. They kind of just like talked about the things. They were like, wouldn't this be cool? Yeah. And uh, they did show the one thing, though. They did, yeah. So let's go through what season 14 is bringing us here. Yeah. So season 14 is like the whole point of it is like new stealth stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be stealthy like a ninja pirate. Okay. Now, they're going to let you crouch. We've been wanting to crouch for a long time, Rare. Thank you. I remember when we got the ability to sit. This is going to be the same thing. Now we can sit and crouch. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's like a, a, an in-between step. You know, In-between, in between. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to be able to crouch and like sneak up on people, I guess. And uh, I also heard him mention hanging off ships, you know, like new ways to like kind of like be stealthy on the side of a ship or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So That'd be cool. Kind of like the sit emote, but I mean, like sitting, but instead you just hang off the side. I don't know if it's an emote or if it's a mechanic. I'm 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 assuming it's a mechanic, like how you can sit. On, oh, you are you talking about how you sit in space? Yes, in like certain spaces on the ship. I bet that's it. I yeah. bet that's how it is. Yeah. I bet you can choose to hang, mm-hmm. but then I don't know how they're gonna. Uh, well, they'll see how that works out. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the thing that everybody's scared of. Okay, the sure. The harpoon gun. The harpoon gun. Yeah. And they literally led off the video showing a clip of this because they know this crap is sensational. Yes. And I don't mean that in a good way. I mean it can be sensationalized. Yeah, and it is a new weapon as well. So this is a weapon like we talked about earlier. There, and so we're gonna go from having only what three weapon types. Now we're gonna no, sorry, four weapon four. types. We're gonna add three more. Um, mm-hmm. So at least three more. Actually, we might be getting a fourth one because they're we're getting those the blow no, darts. The blow darts. I forgot. As well. Yeah, I, I forgot to add those here. But yeah, they're, so they're they're, they're like darts. doubling the number of weapons. When are the blow darts coming? Is that gonna be season fourteen or is yeah. That's, that's a 14 or, or later, I think, kind of thing. Because oh, that was the one where they really were just like, wouldn't it be cool to have blow darts? And they yeah. did different effects. They just It's like they just started a camera on this dude, and they were like, just spitball about what you think would be cool, you know? Yeah. And he was like, man, I've been thinking maybe we'd get some blow darts, and you blow them at, at somebody and track them on the map. Yeah. And I don't know was, how I feel about like, that. It really was like <laughs> he was just you know cooking. They just let him cook. They, they put him, him on cook. camera. <laughs> Speaking of cooking... This harpoon gun is fitting to cook some solo sloopers. Yeah. It's a gun. You can shoot at a ship and zip to it. You know, they literally showed a pirate flying through the air, being shot from a cannon, missing a deck shot, shooting the deck and zipping to the deck. Now, how cool is that? Very. How busted is that? Very. Extremely. Yeah, very busted. Because we know now that, like, getting boards is one of the most important and one of the more difficult things that you can do in ship combat, if mm-hmm. you, you boards can turn the tide in battle 
instantly. And But the thing is, is it's a risk to go out and go for it. You know, you go for a board and if you miss, you've wasted all that time. You could have been firing cannons or repairing your ship mm -hmm. and it's difficult to get those shots. Now it takes away that if you have a harpoon gun on you, yes, one of your weapon slots is gone, mm -hmm. but you pretty much know you're probably going to get that board, which yeah. is, I think, worth the risk of getting rid of one of your weapons. And let's be honest, the other weapon slot's going to have a blunderbuss in it anyway, so you're good to go. <laughs> you're good to go, right. You know? um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they balance that, and it, it's going to need some major balancing. It really is. Um, I, I don't know how they're going to do it. They say it's going to have am ammo, just like mm -hmm. all the other weapons. So, you know, you, once you shoot it, but the thing is, is if you're going for a board, it don't matter. You're not going to need all five of those ammo slots. No. You're just not. You're going to need the one. Yeah. And I kind of hope it has one. Oh, you, I actually you, hope that you hope that they limit it to just one. Yep. I hope it has one ammo slot period. Mm. Maybe, maybe it has one that if you land it comes back to you because you literally like got drawn into it, you know? So it makes sense that you get your harpoon back. Maybe. Mm. But I want it to have one ammo slot. Interesting. And, and they're going to have to balance this, and they haven't yet. No, it's not even in the game yet. No. Another thing that's not in the game yet, uh, apparently we're going to be able to lay traps with like blunder bombs and crap. Yeah, they didn't really show that very much, did they? No, they just mentioned it. Um, I mean, okay. I can see some situations where that would be a really fun play to watch, you know, play out. Say we're stealing a siren song skull and I put a keg next to Briggsy and then I booby trap the area with blunder bombs. That sounds fun. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's also probably a lot of situations where it would go from fun to a little cheap. Yep. Like if you can booby trap your ladders now and you literally can't be boarded without the use of this busted ass harpoon gun. Right. Like, come on. Where's the... Where's the integrity in that, Rare? Right. And especially if you can use blunder bombs, which are so common right now. If you can use those to set traps, mm -hmm. unless there's like, you know, maybe an additional item you have to have to be able to create the trap. Maybe like a trap housing or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They could probably find a way to make it work. Yeah. But gosh. Because mm. that would be cool if there was like a dedicated item that's like a trap item and you can come lay it down and then it does nothing and then you could pick a blunder bomb and put it in it and now you've laid a trap with a blunder bomb in it mm -hmm. um, but you had to find the item to begin with and you couldn't buy it yeah that you couldn't, be, couldn't buy it yeah. you cannot be able to buy that or you it's going to be broken yeah. yeah i could see that and then every so often you try to board somebody and you get blundered by a trap and you're like they had one of the trap things yeah and then it's one-time use yeah okay I can see that. There's a way they could balance it. I, I think, think we balanced it. I think me, I hope Rare if, is watching. If we could balance it in, in two minutes of spitballing, surely Rare can do this. Definitely. And then the last thing that really kind of jumped out to me that I think everybody should be excited about mm -hmm. is that Rare is going to have a team of devs dedicated to maintaining the freaking game. So you, they, they haven't <laughs> had that before. <laughs> Maybe that's no. more concerning. No, they literally said that they have been, they've always had to like pull devs away from content projects. To fix bugs. They've always, they said that in the video. And now they're going to have people like working on, oh, I don't know, uh, hit reg. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Which they know, brought up over and over. They did. So they know it's an issue and, and it is. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, Sea of Thieves has always been, you know, bug of the month. Mm -hmm. And it's fun, you know, to, to fantasize about what's the next bug going to be, you know. But now maybe they'll be a little shorter lived. Also rare, fix your easy anti-cheat. Yeah, that's. That's been a pain. Well, it seems like they did fix. There was a really bad problem just like last week where people who were playing Sea of Thieves using the Microsoft or Xbox app on PC, mm -hmm. their game was just crashing. And that's where I play the game. Mm -hmm. And it was just being crashed like constantly. And then yesterday we get news from Sabesia saying that they fixed it. Yeah. Well, yesterday I played the entire time. My game never crashed. Jamie was playing. His game never crashed. Facts. So, so they, they must have fixed it. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> and that's good. I think yeah. they did kind of do an emergency patch for that. So, yeah. And it warranted one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm psyched overall. 
Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be super exciting to see how it all mm-hmm. pans out. I'll be interested if any of this stuff ends up not happening. Like, they start mm-hmm. to test it more vigorously, yeah. and they decide, well, this isn't going to be good for the game, and they pull it. Well, anything that we talked about today, whether it be the harpoon gun, whether it be traps, whether it be the blow darts that the dude was just spitballing about, mm-hmm. is there anything that's just not going to make, you know, it's going to get cut? I let. I hope it's the harpoon gun. Do you really? Yes. You don't want to use it? You don't want to think like you overshot that deck shot and you just zip down? Yeah, like I said, it looks extremely fun. Yeah. And extremely broken. I mean, but you'll have it too. It doesn't just go both ways. You know, yeah. like both teams will have it. So Yeah, but the team that has more players will have more of them. True. <laughs> See, these has always been dominated by like strength in numbers. And I would like them to do things that maybe help the, the smaller crews. Mm-hmm. This is putting an even greater deficit against the smaller crews. And I don't like that. Literally, the only thing in all of this I feel that kind of benefits a solo player is the only thing they mentioned benefiting a solo player, which is the bone caller. And we all know that's not going to be a game changer. Nope, not at all. So, Because um, it's not just the solo player who has access to it. And in fact, I'd say that you know, like you use it against a solo player and I'd say it's disproportionately worse for them than it was a solo Every, player against a bigger crew. Everything is. Yeah. Everything is disproportionately <laughs> worse for the solo player. Right. And I don't know how to fix that, but I know that throwing easy boards into the game ain't, ain't the way. No, definitely not. But anyway, that, I ain't trying to crap on it. I'm really excited about it, about all these things. You know, we'll see how it goes. It's been a hot minute since we just spouted about <laughs> Sea of Thieves on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, I hope you could get a feel for my... Real enthusiasm. <laughs> well, we made it to the last segment of the podcast now. This is where we, if you made it all the way to the end with us, we want to shout you out and say thanks. Just say, you know, thanks for chilling with us. Thanks for making it in. Thank you for supporting the podcast and supporting what we do here. That's right. And we do that through the Three for Dale Club. So all you got to do to join the Three for Dale Club, which is an exclusive organization, is drop us a comment and say whatever you want. Just include the phrase, Three for Dale. Yep, that's our secret code phrase. Let us know you made it to the end. We look for it. We find everyone who puts that in their comment, and we shout them out. And today we're starting with Juan M254, who said, Three for Dale, another great podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Next up, we got Bomb Voyage, (laughs) (laughs) who said, I am for sure spending less on games this year. I'm only getting some DLC with the current spring sale and just hard focusing my backlog that is at 228 games currently. Yeah, so last podcast we had a segment where we talked about um, were people going to be spending more or less on games mm-hmm. this year compared to last year. Um, seems like a lot of people are saying they're going to spend less probably. Yeah, and and don't put too much pressure on yourself for that 228 game backlog because you won't play them all. No, that's physically impossible. Yeah. You'll be playing them until you die if you try to do them all. Yeah, just live your life. The boy. thing is you've bought two more. You've bought more than you can play. Yeah. We all do it. It's just okay. accept it and play what you want to play. <laughs> yeah, we all do it. <clears throat> Uh, next, we got Guy, who said, I feel like I'm definitely going to be spending more for this first quarter, for sure. We'll have to see what the rest of the year holds for releases. Unfortunately, if that PS5 Pro comes out this holiday, I'll have to get it. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure 8K Gaming will be sick, Guy. You know, we'll be... We'll all talk about it together. Dude, I we're all be, suckers. I might be there with you. I Like I said last week, you know, like me and Daniel are probably, you know, we like to have, even last week, Daniel was crapping on the portal. He's done nothing but play the portal this week. So. Dude, <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up. Guys, I don't know what happened. My portal works now. I don't know what happened. I've been playing the portal every night while I get, before I go to sleep. I've been playing Final Fantasy VII, laying in bed, and it's literally been like the greatest thing ever. So... He's, he's completing the, the portal's like a brand new man to Daniel. I could have, now here's the thing. I was going to do that on Steam Deck anyway. I just like picked up the portal. I was talking to Randy on Discord and I just picked up the portal and I was like, God, I just wish it, I could at least play the damn thing in bed, you know, like, and all of a sudden it's like it heard my cries. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm not going to question Sony it. heard just crap talk in the portal and they was like, you know what? I'm going to make it work for you. I don't know why. Now crap talk the portal. You know, I know it was having problems with mesh systems and I still have one, but it's working great. So Yeah. Apparently that seems to be a problem. Mesh systems don't do well with the portal, but mm-hmm. if it's working, it's working. All right. Next up, we got uh, good old Devin Parks. Our buddy who said, uh, from the title, I thought this podcast would be about me. And the title was the PS5 Pro is dumb or something. Devin. I think it was like dumb and nobody will, or useless and we'll still get it or something. Yeah. But, something like that. Yeah. And I told Devin, I got in there and I responded to Devin and I said, bruh, 
If the podcast was about you, it would be called the PS5 Pro is one upstanding gentleman and we value his support greatly. Right. Devin even gave you a hat. I know An he did. An IRL hat. Hell, it's right here. It's Dale. It's Dale's hat. Got a number of hats here. There you go. Three for Dale. Thank you, Devin. All right. Next, we got D18, who said, loving the new format. Every episode gets better and better. Appreciate the work you guys put in these. Thank you. Yeah, so for those of you guys who are new, the format is different. We used to do like a real, real deep dive on like one topic. Mm -hmm. And now we're kind of like spreading the love and kind of talking about more topics, making the episodes a little longer, but hitting more and more topics. That's right. That's the idea. Spreading the love, more love to go around. Next up, we got Tom Terry, who said, those are some pretty good specs, Sony, but can it get seven NASCAR championships, 76 wins, and 26 poles? Beat that, PS5 Pro. Tom knows exactly how to go to our heart, doesn't he? I'm going to say, uh, it can't. <laughs> it can't, no. Eat crap, Sony. You ain't Dale. Oh, what if they put, what if the, what if the PS5 Pro is called the PS5 Dale? Take my money. Think about it. Take my money Just right now. Just think about it right here. It's going to be fast. <laughs> Telling you. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, we got Kidicalism, who said, Payday 2 has many DLCs. So unless they ported those over to Payday 3 for Dale somehow, <laughs> they'd be doing people dirty. That was what we were talking about. Like, what could they do to get people from... <laughs> Payday 2 to go to Payday 3. And I'm saying, well, maybe they can just cut off Payday 2. Yeah. And what is it about the, the mini DLCs that are better in Payday 2? The like, mi- why does he like... Why, why, no, Manny. Not M-I-N-I. Guys, he loves that joke. He loves the mini, mini Manny. <clears throat> does anyone say, like, really? Do they, like, say Manny? Man, mini. How do you say it? How are you supposed to say that word? M A N Y. Next up, we got he's Landon not even try. <laughs> he's not even going to try. Landon, Dale himself, Stalling, has commented on our podcast many a time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we appreciate it every time. And he said, forget the PS5 Pro, get you a Steam Deck. And I'm telling you what, way to get to my heart. Yeah. Uh, we got Tom in here spouting Dale facts. We got Kit dropping in three for Dale in the sentence. And yep. now we got Landon mentioning the Steam Deck. We just, we, I feel you, very You guys home. are the best. You guys are the best. And finally, and I agree, by to way, round it all that. out, we got the Laninator mm. who said, Sea of Thieves is going to have a great year. And you know what? I think you're right. I think you're right. It's going to be an interesting year. I think that does make it great. Will it be the best year ever for Sea of Thieves? Maybe. I hope. It's going to be interesting no matter what. Whether if it breaks the game and the game goes down in flames, I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't. But, you know, I guess it could happen. I don't think it is. Um, if it does, I'm going down with the ship. You, yep. He's going to go down playing. He's going to go down with his little harpoon gun in his hand. No. Blowing darts. No. <laughs> I'll have a blunder and a sniper like a respectable double gunner. He'll be blow darting, just mm, blow darting right. sharks because no one's playing anymore. Ray, or fix your damn sharks, <laughs> by the way. All right. All right, guys. Well, that brings us then. So until next time, I'm Randy. Which makes me Daniel. And this has been Gaming Gig. Go Braves.